I feel bail or something. I don't know. All right. We all didn't eat today. No, we all ate today. But we're not using that as an excuse, Daryl. So I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that. Think on it. All right. So today is a very special day for my family. Uh, today, our father would have been, I think he's like 84, 84, and he was an amazing father. I will tell you, if you had to, if I had to hand pick a father, he was not perfect, so I'm not saying that, but if I had to hand pick a father who had everything it took to raise a child who knew how to behave, who knew how to treat people, and who loved the Lord, that is him. That was John Berkey. That was him. And, you know, just in, um, of course, I idolize him, as you can probably tell. But I, when I knew that I was going to be speaking today, I got to think it, the first thing I thought was him. And one thing um, I remember back growing up, um, there was something he always told me. And I heard it not every day, but, but often. And that is, um, he would say, Cheryl, your, um, your sins will find you out. Yeah, that will find you out. Okay? And I don't know, I said, Leslie said, you, you said you'd never heard him say that. And I'm, we're not going to dwell on the fact that I heard it a lot, and she I didn't. But that's how it is. She said, she said, you're, and he didn't always use sins. He would say, your, uh, your deeds will find you out. So things that you did, um, I, you know, I, I didn't do a lot of horrible things, but, you know, when I did, I, I always tried to hide them because, you know, that's how I, I still do, I guess, really. Um, so that came from, even though it wasn't verbatim, that came from Numbers uh, 32 and 33, where it says, and your sins will find you out. And the context of that is, it's kind of not, and it doesn't really mean, I think, what we have taken it to mean, because it was when the, Isra uh, when the, Is yeah, the Israelites were, were in the desert and they were about to go in the promised land, there were a couple of groups, and I may be wrong about who this was, but it was Gad and maybe Reuben. They did not want to go into Canaan because they said, you know, all the land is better over here. And they didn't want to have to go all the way to Canaan because they, they were cattlemen. And you know how cattlemen are. You know, gotcha. they, they got to be like, I'm, gonna, I'm better and I'm going to do what I want. So they said they didn't want to go to Canaan. They wanted to stay there. And Moses said, no, no, you may not because Canaan is where God sent you. And he, that is where he told you to go. And... Um, he went on to say, you know, the, the thing about your sins will find you out. And it wasn't really that he meant, you know, everybody's going to know what you did wrong. Because in, you know, a thousand years, probably people didn't know and didn't really think about, well, they were supposed to be in Canaan, but they were over here in this other patch of land. But it does mean that your sins um, will discover you. Or your sins, or your deeds, or the truth will follow you. And you, even though, you know, maybe nobody knows what you have been doing or what you've been thinking, you know, and who else knows? The Lord. The Lord. God knows. Because, and, and that will follow you, and then you, there are sometimes consequences for that. Uh, unless you've asked for forgiveness. Um... Even in Proverbs 3, it said, or 15, 3, excuse me, it says, The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. So he sees everything. And who do we like, who in the Bible, let's start with the Bible first before we start pointing fingers at each other. Who were the first people that God, that tried to hide from God? Adam and Eve. And, at, and if you remember in those scriptures, um, God came into the garden and they hid, right? They put the fig leaves on and they hid after they had eaten the, the forbidden fruit. And God came into the garden and what did he say? Where are you? 
But, but guess what? God knew where they were. That's right. He knew exactly where they were. He knew exactly what they had done, right? He knew, he knew it all, but he did ask. Like he was going to give them a chance to fess up, which I guess kind of they did. But the truth is, who else? Anybody else in the Bible who tried to hide from God? There are tons of people. Uh, I can't think of the name, but he's eaten by a whale. Jonah. Jonah, yes. Jonah tried to hide from God, and he got eaten by a whale. <laughs> Even though people now think, oh, that's not possible. You can't. A whale could not have eaten you, and then you survive that, right? But... It happened. I believe it happened because it says so in the Bible. Um, who else? Moses did. Moses did, and that was why what? How, what was his consequence? He, didn't get to go. he did not get to go. Right. He did not get to go into Canaan. He did not get to go into the Promised Land. As a matter of fact, none of them did, right? None of the original Aaron. Aaron, did. Aaron got to go. But the original people, they, which I guess they were... Like maybe not around, but um, they did not get to go. So God watches over us whether we're doing right or whether we're doing wrong. But as humans, so we're going to take this a little bit different area, and we're going to think about our everyday lives. Have you ever tried to hide, not just from God, but you maybe hide from people? Right. I mean, and probably none of you in here have ever done anything that was horrible. We've but, all played hide and seek. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, well, <laughs> thank you for bringing that up, Tex, because I was never invited to play hide and seek with all the kids. Oh. So now that's bringing up a, kind of a bad memory. <laughs> thank you. You didn't play hide and seek, did you? Not much, no. No, we were too busy trying to kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> so much better. And the truth will find you out, right? <laughs> um. But we do, we hide from people, and we live in a time where social media is king, right? And what do people post? How perfect they are. How perfect everything is, and how, um, you know, and, and there's, I guess, nothing really wrong with that. You know, we went to Cancun, we're out in our backyard enjoying God's sunset. We are, yeah, we are doing, and you post the good stuff. And so then we, as normal people who don't go to Cancun or enjoy a lot of sunsets or have perfect children, get what is, and it, there's a name for it now. It's called FOMO, fear of missing out. And so I'm so jealous of these people, not me really, but you know, we're all so jealous of these people that are posting these things because, because that's where our focus is, is on you know, what, what's, what is everybody else doing? What is everybody going? And so then we get embarrassed. And it, and, it, and it causes depression and all that kind of thing. But Facebook or, or, or social media is also kind of a good place to hide from people. Because, and that is what, that was kind of the point of it, that all these people, are their lives perfect, do you think? No. no. They're not. But they are, in a sense, hiding from the reality that they have problems and, and they gloss over that and because they want everyone to think oh my life is perfect and on some level how many of us in this room have done that have like, kind of glossed over all the bad stuff and just put it all out there as like oh my life is so good and I'm so happy and yeah we do that yeah yeah, and I, and I do that, too, because I don't like to draw attention to myself. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't, I really don't, I really kind of, well, I kind of do, but I don't, because... You don't want pity attention. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't want that. You want, I don't want people feeling sorry hey, for me. Hey, look at me. me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want people feeling sorry for me or trying to, you know, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that kind of attention. So, so I do that too, um, and then sometimes I'm just kind of embarrassed at the fact because I know it's hard to to see me like, oh that Cheryl, she's so funny and she's so, you know, she's got it all going on and she's very comfortable, but you know what? That is far from the truth. I have anxiety through the roof, through the roof. I being around people like I don't go to movies because. 
I would have to sit next to somebody that I don't know. So I don't go. The only time I ever go to a movie is if you go to a sign seat and I would like buy two, a couple of seats. So nobody would sit by me. That that's how that's how bad it is. So yeah. we, we now know when we take her to the movies, we have her in a middle seat. Yeah. Well, I, I don't I can't have you on the side of me, so you gotta buy some. Well we seats. we know you though. So we that's can be true. on the so side of you. But I don't, I don't like it when I go to the grocery store and people talk to me that I don't know. I don't like it. I, it makes me it, it makes me angry. I came home the other day from and let I, I think I, you were the one I told this to. And this person that we, we deal with each other like every couple of months and I see her and I went and and I saw her in, in our venue and um, then she was telling me all about her childhood and about her horses and about like the, the animals that she's had and then she's like oh I'm going to your phone number and I'm going to text you some pictures and I went home and you know what I wasn't thankful that I had this person who was interested in getting to know me I went home and what did I say you remember, oh my God, this woman wants me to be her friend. <laughs> so I have a lot of issues. I guess that's just like, you know, I guess that's what we're going to say. That, that I have a lot of issues within myself, but do I want the people to know them? No. And I can't even believe I just told you all that story. I really can't. I cannot believe that because I am a very private person. Private person. I thought she was going to say secretive, but I'm a very private person. Um. But what are some ways that we hide from people, especially people who might know inside me, inside you? Have you ever thought, you know what, I'm not going to church today because Val's going to take one look at me and she's going to know what I'm thinking. She's going to know that I had bad thoughts. Or Brother Robert is going to look at me and he's going to say, man, her heart's not right right now. And, I, you know, you so would hide from that. So sometimes we do. And people who, especially who don't have a good, a good relationship with God, will do that. Uh, so we avoid them. We avoid phone calls from them. Uh, you know what, I don't, I don't want to talk to you because you're going to ask me to do something. Right, I'm not. So I'm just not going to answer the phone when, when, uh, when you call. Uh, we avoid in-person contact. Um, so all of this, or sometimes we just put on a show. Right, I my life is perfect. Uh, piety. This is what one comment commenter talked about. About piety, making people think that your life is perfect is really a smokescreen for, like, don't see through me. Don't see my pain. And we can look at everybody, and or a lot of people, and think, because I remember back a long time ago, one of my very dear friends, the first time I met her, and I worked with her for 20 years, and I thought Beverly was perfect. She had two gorgeous sons who were uh, educated and had goals and you know did very well she you know her husband they were, she's a good Christian woman uh, she just always you know she always looked good and I was like gosh I wish I could be more like Beverly but the more I got to know her and the more we shared things you know I found out things like um, her son had gotten a DWI one night and so they were working through the legal system with that and that's a very long process if you've never had to do it uh, so there, there was that. Um, her daughter-in-law and her son, her other son, were having fertility issues, and what a long drawn out, and what and what pain was in that family because of that. And and so we should, when we see people like that, you know, I encourage you to look beyond what they put out to people, and and pray for them because they all have problems just like you and I. And so hiding is not it is not where it is. And God knows. And God knows what you've got going on. God knows when I get mad at somebody and my heart is just like, oh, I cannot believe these people. I wish they would just get away from me and not ever talk to me again. You know, and we've all been there, I think. 
all the girls have. I don't know that you guys, yeah. <laughs> but all the girls have. I know you have. That you just think like, and you just get mad about something, and you think, and um, but but we don't we don't show it, and we don't. But we know that it's there. But God knows. God knows that I have a problem sometimes with people. God knows that I'm going to tell you. I have a problem cussing. I love Jesus, but man, I like to cuss. And so it's, and that's not two things that go together. And so I have been, I've been very aware of that lately because I think about, like in my workspace, there's a lot of younger people there and a lot of, uh, of people who maybe are Christians, but maybe are not really active in, in the church and, and with their kids who are all young. And I think, you know, I should be a better example. So that's something I've really tried to work on. Um, I'm not working on it much at home. That's what Les is thinking. I'm not working on it much at home, but but I really am trying to um, trying to think about that and, and what kind of witness I am when and I'm not a, I mean like I don't say the horrible words, but you know yeah it's bad. So y'all can pray for me about that. That's something y'all can pray for. Uh, but but we don't but we know because God knows and God knows that I feel bad when I do it. He knows that I feel bad, but he forgives me when I ask for forgiveness. Um, can anybody think of a, because that's what I want to end with, and I know this has kind of been not, I don't know, but there's also a blessing that God knows everything. Can anybody think of an instance why that is? Because then he knows what's wrong, if, even if you can't think to ask him. Right, if you don't think to ask him, or if you just don't have the words, sometimes you, I pray, and I know all of us do, we pray and we cannot find, we just, maybe, maybe all we can do is cry. Maybe all we can do is just sit there with our head in our hands. But you know who knows what we're thinking? God. What do we need? Who knows what we need? God knows what we need. And, and we don't even, there's a song I heard, that we don't have to utter a word when we pray. All we have to do is just let God take our lives, take over our lives. We don't, we don't have to utter anything, any kind of word. You know, we don't have to be uh, eloquent prayers like Val is. You know, we don't, we don't have to be that. We don't have to, to be able to express ourselves because we've all been in situations where we just can't express ourselves, whether, you know, no matter what it is. And to ask either forgiveness or for help or for guidance. Um, so that is the good thing. Because sometimes it is a bad thing that God knows everything. And sometimes it is an uncomfortable, not a bad thing, but an uncomfortable thing. But sometimes it's such a blessing to know that he knows what we need long before we ever need it. Amen. And he not only knows, but he is taking care of it. He's going to take care of it. I don't. No, and I've often said this in, in situations, but when people have adversity and don't have God, I sometimes have no idea how they how they keep standing up, literally, mm -hmm. quite literally. I do not know how they make it through that. Um, having a spouse die without without God and godly people, you know, where would you be able to? Cope. Probably not. Probably not. When you have, you know, you're a child who is sick or heaven forbid passes away, how would you ever, ever do that? I think back again to my friend Beverly. How could she ever have gone through um, John and his DWI or 